Welcome to the Sharkpreneur Podcast with Kevin Harrington and Seth Green. Kevin Harrington is the inventor of the infomercial, one of the original sharks from the hit TV show Shark Tank, and has generated over $5 billion in TV and digital direct response sales. Seth Green is the world's first trusted authority on cutting edge direct response marketing, a best selling author, and the only three time Marketer of the Year nominee. On the podcast, Kevin and Seth interview sharkpreneurs who share straight talk on what it takes to explode your business. Welcome to the podcast. This is your host, Seth Green. Today, I have the good fortune to be joined by Moran Pober of abdassets.com. ABD Assets is a leading independent firm looking to acquire equity stakes in companies with growth prospects, and then they help assist them with their continued development managerially and strategically. Moran is a, is what, is a former Israeli Defense Forces soldier. Um, he founded iTips, a top 100 app in 100 app stores around the world, including the US, Canada, and the UK. He's carried out extensive consulting assignments with many companies. Moran, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. I'm excited. All right, let's dive right in. Um, let's go back in time a little bit. So you served in the Israeli Defense Forces. Yes, I did for three years. Uh, three years, and then take us from uh, what happened after you were done with your service. Um, yeah, so as soon as I was done with the army, I, I wanted to be a business owner. I didn't want to have a boss. That was the, the main gist of it. I was like, no way anyone will let me know, will let me or will tell me what to do, uh, which made me want to start my own business. Um, I've been involved in a few businesses. Um, my first business, I started it almost 11 years. And since then, I realized that I don't want to run businesses anymore. I don't want to manage the day-to-day anymore. And I want to become an owner of businesses. And it's funny because one of the main reasons that I, I even heard about this opportunity and this option to, to become an owner and an investor is by watching TV shows like Shark Tank and Dragon's Den for the UK or Canadian version or The Profit and those TV shows made me realize that this is what I want to do. I want to call the shots in the business. I don't want to manage the small details in a company. And since then, that's all my focus basically. Day to day, I'm out there looking for businesses to invest and buy. And that's my plan at the moment. Awesome. Now, um, what was the first business you ever invested in? So, um, I Yes, the, the best story is that I used to have a, an app company. So I bought this existing app, uh, which was basically a failing app. It used to do just give tips for iPhone, basically. So now if you have an iPhone, there's a default version that comes up with your iPhone. And it just giving you productive ways to use your iPhone, um, kind of like just tips and tricks on how to um, just be more productive with your phone. So I, I, I bought this, this app, this code. And I pretty much reinvented it. I hired designers, account, uh, marketers, developers, and we grew it to a point where the app got to be in the top 100 in more than 100 stores around the, around, around the, the app store, around the world, anywhere, including um, US, UK, Canada, Australia, all the big ones. That is absolutely incredible. I believe it is now a native app with my iPhone, and I have used it multiple times and learned cool stuff. So thank you for that. <laughs> no worries. No. So it's actually a funny story. That's the default version that iPhone got right now. It's not the, it's not my app, obviously that's, that's iPhone, that's Apple version. Um, my app back then, but used to do the same and Apple didn't have that version back then. Um, until the, the reason that I stopped with that company is because Apple basically came to me one day and told me, Hey, sorry, you can't upload the new version uh, because we came up with our version, uh, which basically made me, um, stop that business and let me to That's do like when doing. Apple decides to put Apple Maps on their phone and make Garmin obsolete. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, then, so you're out there looking for businesses to acquire and help grow. What are some of the factors you look for in determining what businesses to invest in? Um, so for me, right now, at least, it's mostly just a financial decision. So it's making sure. So I like to look for businesses were already existing for at least five years. So those businesses are usually stable. Um, you know probably the fact that most startups, they, they're going to fail in the first few years. So what I try to do is just skip those years. 
go to existing businesses that existed for at least five. I talk to businesses sometimes that existing for 15, 20 years. And I know that those businesses are much more stable. Maybe they won't give me the same return as a startup, but I know that I could come in, um, invest in something that is very, very stable over the last few years. And for me, the main thing is just the, the motivation of the owner. Um, that's why I like to go to businesses that usually owned by baby boomers. There's tons of them at the moment. People are looking to retire and they're looking for, you could say the safe pair of hand to take over their business. Um, many times they don't have a family or kids to, to hand over the business to, or they, they have kids who just don't want to run that boring business. And me personally, I mean, those are perfect businesses for me. Many times they already have existing management teams in place or people who just work in the business for many, many years who know about um, the day-to-day -day management involvement, all that stuff. So for me, th that's the main thing. Just financially, I want the deal to make sense, bring in good returns. I like business with lots of assets. So things like uh, accounts receivables, um, again, really depends on the business, right? But I like business with assets that we could um, use and yeah, just use to our benefit to grow the business. Are there any types of minimums you're looking for? You mentioned at least five years in business. Any types of minimums you're looking for in terms of revenue, in terms of employee count, in terms of uh, stuff like that? Yeah, 100%. So I look for businesses doing at least a million year in sales. Uh, the bare minimum would be business doing half a million in sales. And the reason for that is just because below that, many times the business is highly, highly dependent on the owner which I personally just don't like because, I mean, if I'm going to buy the business and the owner want to retire or quit, what, what I'm going to do then? Um, many times um, all the clients deal with him personally with the owner. So I like to go into businesses who already got existing um, management team in place, already got some systems and basically a business that will grow no matter who the owner is or is the day-to-day -day manager. Um, yeah, that's, that's my main thing. Are there any particular industries that you've had bigger success in than others? Mm -hmm. So I, I like the, the marketing industry a lot. Um, any, I like businesses that are sales and marketing driven mostly. Um, at the same time, I really like to look at business like uh, distribution just because they're asset rich businesses and the fact that if a business existing for 20 years, it's manufacturing an existing product or, or, or engineering business. I mean, many times they're going to keep growing very slowly, but surely. What are some of the most common mistakes you see entrepreneurs making when it comes to looking for outside investment? When they look for outside investments? When they were just uh, talking to somebody like you. Oh, well, there's many things. I think the biggest thing that will probably be good to emphasize is the fact that I see many business owners who go and open their books to anyone. And I heard horror stories from potential buyers who literally, I want to buy your business. Sorry, I thought the, the connection was lost. Um, they, they tell them, I want to buy your business. They um, make an offer and then Usually when you're about to buy a business, there's a due diligence period where usually there's exclusivity. And what I heard is buyers just literally destroying the business in the exclusivity period. They're still in um, employees. They're basically offering them double salaries. They're still in clients because they have access to all that info. And many of them just say, hey, I could just do that myself. I don't need to buy that business. I could probably do it faster. Um, that's why when I personally go and talk to business owners, I really try to put an emphasis on the fact that just, just trying to put myself as and position myself as the safe pair of fans, someone who's going to take care of the employees, the heritage, uh, the brand, the track record, all that stuff. Um, I think it's, it, it's crucial to present yourself that way when you're looking to buy a business, especially, especially if you're a competitor of that business you're looking to buy. Absolutely. What are some of the ways after you take a look at it, after you invest, um, that you help the business grow to the next level where it becomes more profit, where it becomes profitable for you as an investor. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, business in the end of the day, any business is a business, right? It's making sure more com money coming in than money. The sales and marketing systems are fine. Uh, making sure you're collecting receivables, uh, that payables terms are, 
are good for you. Um, I really emphasize the fact that you gotta have systems. So I like to make sure everyone, uh, I like to put things on order where let's say I have an employee who's doing something. I, I don't want him to be the only employee who know what he's doing, right? I like to have procedures for everything. So just those basic things, obviously a, a good accounting and, and all that stuff, HR, just, just basic business uh, things in the end of the day. Um, but you just, I, I think the biggest thing is just making sure people execute those things. Um, business is just business. The biggest problem I see, it's many times just more of a mindset issues. I think you need to deal with and just making sure employees are motivated, making sure things are getting done. I think that's the biggest, biggest thing. Just make sure things that they know they need to do, just make sure they do them. Easier said than done, but that's why you're writing the checks. Um, at any given time, how many different businesses are you invested in? Um, so I want to say that my goal is to, my goal for the next few years is to buy 100 businesses or be involved in 100 transactions. I don't know why I picked that one number, maybe just because it sounds nice cool. Number. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think it really, really depends on the opportunity because in the end of the day, it's not just about my capital because many times I, I just use bank money and investors money. So it's, it's not just about the access to capital I have. Um, it's more about the cost of capital and just making sure we're looking for good deals because if I'll find a good deal, I, I don't want to put a limit on the number of investments I have, especially because I'm not involved in the day to day to the day to day as much. Um, I think it all depends on the type of investment that I'll find, the deal flow that I have coming in, and all that stuff. How are you finding businesses to invest in now? Yeah, so great question. Um, in the end of the day, it's, it, it, it's like running a business and doing a, a marketing campaign. Same goes here. I mean, I'm basically a business, but I'm coming from a different positioning. Um, I'm just doing marketing campaigns in the end of the day, and it comes down to anything from um, online, social media, things like LinkedIn, um, anywhere from direct emails or letters. I mean, that works still. Uh, or just brokers. There's tons of brokers out there who list businesses for sale. Um, I like deals who are not listed for sale more just because um, deals, businesses that are listed with brokers, they're usually looking for premium um, for their businesses. And I personally don't want to pay premium. So I rather... I'd rather find deals from referrals, from direct contact and, and things like that. You talked about having investment capital and investors participate in your deals. How are you finding investors? Um, yeah, so how do I find investors? In the end of the day, it's about, again, it's about building your network, building your connections, having some kind of track record. I mean, there, I don't remember who told it, but there's more money out there looking for deals than deals looking for money i mean if you have the right deal you could and if you really want to do that deal you'll find people who want to join you um people out there who have money are looking for great opportunities and i think in the private market i mean investors could get returns that they could get nowhere else not in real estate not in the public market i mean if you have a good deal you could find the investors obviously you build relationships over time and it's a matter of of trust and getting to know the person and all that. Um, but I think it comes down more to actually finding the right deal. What is the biggest transaction you've ever been involved in? Um, so I just say that it's, it's seven figure one. So in, in the seven figure, I, I didn't do eight yet. Working on it. Yep. <laughs> With um, where are you physically located? Where is ABD? So, I'm personally Israeli. I'm born and raised in, in Israel. Um, but to be honest, I didn't have a home for more than five months over the last seven years. So I'm all over the place. Um, mostly we're looking for deals in the UK, US, Canada, and Australia. Those are our four main markets. Um, but I could tell you, I looked, I looked at deals in, in Poland and in Mexico. Um, I'm not saying that I'm going to take every deal, but the way I structure my company, it's not like I'm a private equity fund. I don't have an existing fund. I'm not like a VC, a venture capital. I have an existing fund to play with. I'm, I'm basically more of like an individual investor who got, connection, who got network of other investors and just working per deal by deal basis. 
that's that's our plan unlike uh, vc or private equity you have very specific criteria for things they're looking for right you're um, not restricted no exactly so and maybe i will be in the future i don't know um, who knows right but right now i just i just found it also because i feel like vcs and private equities um yeah i, I have friends in that world and at least based on what I see, I, I'm not really excited about having investors that I need to, it's basically like having a boss again. You don't want to want. report to anybody, right? Yeah. <laughs> what do you like best about what you do? Um, that's a great question. I think in the end of the day, it's the, so I, I'll tell you that in the last business that I actually ran the day to day and was kind of like a day to day CEO, I had it every moment. Even when I made good money, I literally remember waking up and feeling dreaded about the day. And now I'm, I'm really, really excited about my day to day. I enjoy the fact that I get to meet really, really interesting people. I think and talk to really interesting people, even this, I mean, this is great. Unlike being in front of like a marketing campaign or looking too much at numbers and stuff like that. I still do. But I think what I like about what I do right now, that it's, I'm more in the people business. And I think also the fact that what I'm doing right now is perfect for ADD people because I can be involved in so many things at the same time and there's a good excuse for that. I mean, it's still being productive, but in a good way. I'm, I have my focus, don't get me wrong, I think focus is, is really important, but my focus is about doing deals. But as long as I'm focused on deals, I can be involved in many, many sectors, many, many industries. I can learn about tons of things. I can be all over the place, but still be focused. That's what I really like. And the fact that I just, I work with amazing people. I mean, just to give you an idea, I had a, I have every week I have calls with tons of business owners who I potentially look into, just look at, invest, buy. And some of those people are owners of those businesses for 10, 20, 20 years sometimes, right? They're so passionate about their business and it just, you just getting addicted. Just the vibe that you're getting from people who, who, talk to you about their business, about their baby. Um, I love it. I personally love it. And I learned about a lot about business. I learned a lot, lots of things about specific industries, things they're doing in that industry, which I could go and bring to a different industry. I think that's great as well. Fascinating interview. This has been Seth Green with Moran Pober of abdassets.com. Moran, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you again for having me. I had a great time. Thanks so much for listening to this special productivity series of the Direct Response Marketing Podcast. I've interviewed hundreds of the most successful entrepreneurs, thought leaders, and CEOs all over the world, and I want to share with you one of the biggest ways I've discovered to triple your productivity that I've learned from these amazing people. Even better, I'll pay you $500 to test drive it. Just go to take the 500 challenge.com that's www.take the 500 challenge.com to learn more thanks so much for listening this show has been produced by market domination llc to discover how you can have your own show completely done for you and turn it into a real published book and become the authority in your marketplace go to www.marketdominationllc.com slash podcast offer